So since I've got Windows 10 on the DistroDevs PC, it's the perfect time to capture some Linux versus Windows comparison video footage. And since you guys really seem to enjoy the format of the last comparison I did, we're gonna use it here too. Videos like this wind up being a blend of resource usage and performance benchmarks without diving too deep into the details of things. A lot of it is left up to interpretation. We're gonna be comparing Windows 10 Home Edition versus Ubuntu 20.4. And we're using Home Edition because that's the edition I just covered on the DistroDelve show. And it goes without saying that this video isn't meant to make one platform look better than the other. It's all just data here, and it's all about what it means and represents to you, dear viewer. So the test methodology here is a little jank, but considering we're comparing arbitrary things between two totally unrelated operating systems, it'll just have to do. But basically, we'll open up a task manager on both desktops and get a baseline system resource usage. Windows is on the left, Ubuntu is on the right. At idle right after login, we can see that Windows is using just about 1.6 gigabytes of memory just sitting here, and the CPU usage fluctuates anywhere between 8% and 38%. Over in Linux land, Ubuntu is using just shy of 1.3 gigabytes of memory at idle, the CPU usage is right around 10%, excluding that spike of about 40%, which is probably because apt was doing something. And now we'll launch a whole bunch of apps and do basic everyday things on the desktop, like open a web browser and go to my YouTube channel, open the calculator app, calendar app, and mount my USB card reader, copy a zip file to the hard drive and extract it, and open a big old text file, open a picture, watch a video, that sort of thing. Windows was generally slower at everything, so I had to adjust the speed a little bit, make some clever edits so that everything looks congruent. But the usage results were practically the same on each run. I re-recorded the footage for this comparison section probably a dozen times, and I still couldn't make it through without just a few edits. And I'm not totally sure if I'm reading the graph correctly because Windows seems to aggregate the CPUs. And as you can see on the Ubuntu side, each CPU is clearly shown, but on Windows, it's just a single and sometimes unrealistically low number. So yeah, take the CPU usage results with a grain of salt, but the memory usage should be pretty spot on. Once all of our apps are open, we'll let the desktop sit for a few minutes so that it can kind of even out and then recheck the system resource usage. And after we do all of that, after opening and playing with all of these apps and stuff, Windows wound up using about 2.7 gigabytes of memory and eventually settled in at about 7% CPU usage. On the other hand, Ubuntu is using about 2.1 gigabytes of memory and the CPU usage evened out at about 20 to 25%. And the final contrived test is where we close all of the applications down except for the task manager and watch the system return to normal resource usage. For Windows, this means the memory usage drops down to just under 2 gigabytes, and the CPU usage is reporting right around 2%. Ubuntu is reporting 1.3 gigabytes of memory used and about 20% CPU, which is roughly the same as it was with everything open. So again, I'm not sure if I'm reading these CPU results correctly. I normally use HTOP for the Linux stuff but it would be weird comparing like a terminal to Windows's thing. And I know I can get HTOP on Windows, but let's not complicate things. And with that, let's jump over to the more accessible tests. Benchmarks. Doing side-by-sides like these are a little challenging, but they are essential because numbers alone do not tell the whole story. You see time and time again that Windows edges out Linux and frame rates, but does that mean that Windows is better all around? Well, maybe, but numbers don't show hitching that sometimes happens on Linux. I mean, it can happen on Windows too, but it definitely happens more on Linux, and tearing happens more on Linux too, and those don't show up in numbers either. First up is the UniEngine Superposition benchmark, which both distros returned almost the exact same frame rate in the low 20s. But despite the results being super close, the Windows version of the benchmark seemed just a little bit smoother. And next up is CSGO, where the Workshop benchmark map returned over 70 frames a second on both distros. But it's kind of the same story, even though they returned about the same frame rate, Windows just seems a little bit smoother for some reason. And next we've got the native Linux port of Deus Ex Mankind Divided by Feral Interactive, and this one really shows the differences between Windows and Linux. The in-game benchmark returned 27 and 25 frames a second for Windows and Linux respectively, but look at the Linux side, especially when fighting starts. This is not 25 frames a second, and to be honest, it's barely playable. 
The next and final benchmark is Grand Theft Auto V and the in-game benchmark reported a significant FPS gap. And you can see the difference here because the gap is so big, but I didn't really feel it all that much. It's interesting if you watch Game Bar and Mango HUD, the difference in system resource utilization on the Windows side, DirectX is using everything available to it. But on Linux, it fluctuates wildly between CPU and GPU, and it's not even really peaking out when it needs to, which is probably causing those frame rate drops. And the last game I'll show is XCOM 2, another native port by Feral Interactive. There's no benchmark for this, so I'll just leave it playing in the background so you can judge the performance and my laughable XCOM tactics yourself. Now if we look at synthetic tests like Geekbench, we see that Ubuntu bested Windows in almost every single test except for image inpainting, whatever that is. Ubuntu did quite a bit better in the Vulkan scores too, save for just a couple tests. And Ubuntu is using an older NVIDIA driver version 440, whereas Windows is using driver version 451. So if Ubuntu can beat Windows in terms of resource usage and synthetic benchmarks, why are the gaming performance results so poor? Well, I don't know, but I suspect it has more to do with the Linux windowing system and display than anything else. Specifically X server, which is an essential component of a Linux desktop. Did you notice any tearing in the Ubuntu footage? Thanks X. A replacement for X server called Wayland has been in the works for years and it's stable enough on GNOME and maybe some other desktops, but it wouldn't really help the gaming scene because pretty much all Linux games are built to work with X server, and Wayland has to spin up its own little micro X server to play them. Then there's also question of driver support, which I'm not going to talk much about. Like so many things in the Linux community, the choice between AMD or Nvidia is a polarized one. I use Nvidia, and as we saw here, the frame rates were comparable. I've used AMD cards in the past, and the performance has always lagged behind NVIDIA on Linux, but supposedly that's changed, I don't know. I'm of the opinion that Linux gaming performance will never match native Windows performance. But you have to remember that DirectX was designed and developed by Microsoft for Windows back in the 90s as a gaming-focused competitor to OpenGL. And the Windows desktop compositor and windowing system are built around DirectX. 3D support isn't an additional extension to the windowing system like it is on Linux. Also remember that a lot of the innovation that has happened on Linux recently has been for server and workstation workloads. Serious 3D gaming on Linux is a relatively new thing. But on Windows, people have been doing heavy 3D gaming for years, for literally decades. So yeah, if you're looking for an operating system that can breathe new life into your old or low-spec hardware, Ubuntu or pretty much any distro of desktop Linux is perfect. But if all you do is gaming or use Windows exclusive software and you don't want to deal with the hassle of bending Linux to your will, you're probably better off sticking with Windows.